In this video, we'll talk about the different kinds of monster spawners and their peculiarities, their spawn rates and how to turn them into automated monster farms for materials. There are currently four kinds of monster spawners in the game. Great Wolf Nests, Bone Piles, Body Piles and Fire Geysers. Once destroyed, they'll never come back, so think carefully if you really want to get rid of one. Sometimes the spawners take long spawn breaks, but I couldn't figure out what exactly triggers them. Great Wolf Nests can be found inside the Black Forest. They spawn one Great Wolf every 12 seconds. Their HP is 100.1 and upon their destruction they drop an ancient seed. It seems like destroying the branches around it doesn't do anything, but I didn't test it all that much so I can't say it for sure. Cause there were no spawn rates that I could find, I've went the tedious way and committed an entire genocide just for this video. I've killed 1000 of the monsters spawned by this nest and they spawned as follows. 68% of them were great wolves, 16% great wolf brutes and the remaining 16% were great wolf shamans. The chances for 0 star, 1 star and 2 star creatures were 2.5% for 2 star creatures, 10% for 1 star creatures and 87.5% for 0 star creatures. A great wolf spawner is only able to sustain 3 spawned great wolves at a time. As long as they're still alive, the spawner won't spawn any more creatures. Cause this is gonna be really tedious otherwise you'll first want to lose all three spawned great wolves into some kind of hole or place where they can't escape from. They won't despawn and the nest won't spawn any new creatures while they are locked away safely so you can just do your thing and build around the nest as you want. But don't lure them too far away as that would make new ones spawn. Now let's abuse this and build a great wolf farm out of it. Start out by lowering the ground by a few sections in a radius of one wood floor around the spawner. This is so the great wolves don't accidentally damage their own nest due to their own stupidity. You can leave a pillar in the middle right below the nest. Next, flatten the ground and place campfires everywhere. These will burn down the great wolves and make it so you won't have to slaughter every single one of them and you can actually kill them whenever they spawn without being near the farm. Make sure to level around the outer edge of the pit if you left a pillar in the middle so you don't accidentally lower the ground below the spawners and make the monsters spawn there as well. Alternatively, you could place bonfires so you don't need to place a roof above but I personally like campfires better because they burn half a minute longer at 84.5 instead of 84 minutes per wood that's fat to the fire. In addition to that, bonfires are available to build way after you usually encounter your very first monster spawner. Next build a cleaning room right next to your pit where you can lure the great wolves when the campfires aren't burning anymore so they don't bother you while cleaning out the drops and refueling the campfires. Then you want to build a workbench in such a way that it covers the entire area around the spawner so the drop materials don't despawn. The workbenches influence the spawning of monsters in the wild, they don't influence the spawn rate of monster spawners. Then close the cleaning room off with the door. As long as they have not yet spotted an enemy, they'll usually refrain from attacking walls and doors. Lastly, build walls and a roof around it if you used campfires. You want to make sure there's enough space between the spawner and the roof, so the monsters don't spawn on top of it. Make sure the smoke doesn't form a cloud close to the nest, as it won't spawn any great wolves if this happens. When you're done building, kill the great wolves in the pit you made in the beginning to start the farm. Now is this self-sustainable? Yeah, it is, as long as you stay near it for at least 3 minutes per wood burned. Now let's get on to the skeleton spawners. They are found in the burial grounds and the swamps. They have 50.1 HP and spawn one skeleton every 6 seconds. I got really tired of killing all those great wolves so I went a little easier on our bone friends and only eradicated 500 of them. I'm differentiating between sword skeletons, bow 
skeletons and shield skeletons here, but not between wooden shield and copper shield spawns. Out of the 500 skeletons, 38% were sword skeletons, 22% were bow skeletons and 40% were shield skeletons. I assume that this would have changed to a 40-20-40 ratio eventually, but that's just an assumption based on the spawns for great dwarfs having the same number two times. You transform these into a farm the same way you would transform a great wolf nest. But there are a few differences. This time, instead of digging a pit to trap them in, you'll want to use the race ground function of the hoe to build their prison. First, you obviously don't want to dig down as the swamps are very close to sea level and you would reach the water level, making it impossible to place campfires. Second, skeletons can spawn on top of their own spawners, so you want to place campfires on there as well. Lastly, you definitely want to at least build walls around the pit so the ranged monsters don't shoot their nest when you're near. Are they self-sustainable? No, they aren't. Skeletons only drop bone fragments and skeleton trophies, which are both really not that great at the moment. They can only be used for early game armor and later on become as useless as me in the morning. Next up are the Draugr spawners. You can find them inside Draugr villages and the swamps. They have 100.2 HP. Just like the skeleton spawners, they spawn one mob every six seconds. I also killed 500 of these and separated them into axe, shield, bow and elite. Again, I didn't differentiate between the two different shield types. 34% of the spawns were shield draugr, 32% were axe draugr, 18% were bow draugr and 16% were elite draugr. Once again, I think that these would converge to both shield and axe draugr having the same percentages and bow and elite draugr as well. You build farms for these the exact same way you would build a skeleton farm, except except for if you find them inside a Draugr village. In that case, you can dig down just like you would do with a Great Wolf Nest. Are they self-sustainable? No. You need Draugr entrails for sausages, but usually you're missing the thistles and not the entrails to cook them, so I can't really encourage you too much to create a Draugr farm, but if you think you might need some more entrails, then a Draugr farm is the way to go for you. Last on our list are the Sirtling spawners. They're found inside of the swamps and they're probably the easiest to abuse. They're indestructible and can't be damaged. Sirtlings spawn here once every 5 minutes and they do so in packs of 3. I've observed 67 spawn cycles, so 201 spawns in total. You can see the exact spawn ratios on the screen right now. Just dig away the ground so there's only water around the spawner and you're done. As Sirtlings take damage from water. They drop coal and Sirtling cores, which are both relatively useful even in the late game. You probably already know the question and the answer is yes. Sirtling farms are, of course, self-sustainable as you only need materials for the workbench and nothing else. If we combine the spawn rates, assuming the spawn rate for the different rarities is the same for all monsters, we end up with 86% for 0 star, 12% for 1 star and 2% for 2 star creatures. That's it! I hope you enjoyed the video! If there's some topic you want to know more about and want me to cover it, please tell me down in the comments.